Okay, now we'll look at some examples of taking derivatives or finding derivatives using the product rule. This first one is y equals x cubed times the sine of x. So this is clearly two functions. x cubed is the first and sine of x is the second. And the product rule says that the derivative will be the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So the first is x cubed and then my second is sine x so the derivative of that is cosine x so that's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second which is sine x times the derivative of the first which would be 3x squared and that's it you're done now if you want to you can uh, factor a little bit you notice that there's an x cubed there and an x squared there so we could factor out an x squared from each term you don't necessarily have to but if we do we get x squared times x cosine x plus 3 sine x and it is good to be able to change it from one form to another because if you're taking an exam, for example, and uh, this is a multiple choice question, and you're told to find the derivative of this, um, and you find that, well, one of the choices, if it's a multiple choice question, one of the choices might be this. So it is, it's, you don't have to factor it to solve the problem, but to, to answer a particular test question, you might need to know that one is equivalent to the other. Okay, in this example, we're told y equals... 6x minus 8 to the fifth times 2x plus 5 to the seventh. So this is clearly the product of two functions. 6x minus 8 to the fifth is the first one. 2x plus 5 to the seventh is the second one. So the derivative will be the, the first, which is 6x minus 8 to the fifth, times the derivative of the second. So we have to take the derivative of 2x plus 5 to the seventh and that will involve using the power rule and then the chain rule with our inner function so the derivative of 2x plus 5 to the seventh is 7 times 2x plus 5 to the sixth times the derivative of this inner function here which is simply 2 so what we just did was the first times the derivative of the second now we need, need to do the second times the derivative of the first. Okay, the second function, that's easy. That's just 2x plus 5 to the seventh times the derivative of the first. And we use the power rule again. 5 times 6x minus 8 to the fourth times the derivative of the inner function here, which is 6. And that's it. Now we can simplify this, and I'm going to do a little bit of algebra to simplify it and factor it. Okay, first let's just combine these um, coefficients here. There's a 7 and a 2, that'll give me a 14, and the 5 and the 6 will give me a 30. So let's rewrite it like that. This is 14 times 6x minus 8 to the 5th times 2x plus 5 to the 6th. And then the second term we have 30 times 2x plus 5 to the seventh times 6x minus 8 to the fourth. Now we have two terms here. And we can find some common factors in each term. Look at this 14 and a 30. We can factor out a 2 from each term. So I'm going to write a a 2 out front here. This would be 2 times something. And then notice this, the 6x minus 8 to the 5th. And over here we have 6x minus 8 to the 4th. Remember that 6x minus 8 to the 5th can be thought of as 6x minus 8 to the 4th times 6x minus 8. So both terms here, both terms here have a factor of 6x minus 8 to the 4th. So I can factor that out. I'll write 6x minus 8 to the 4th. Now look at this uh, 2x plus 5 to the 6th. 2x plus 5 to the 6th on that side. And over here on this term, we have a 2x plus 5 to the 7th. So both terms have a 2x plus 5 to the 6th in them. 
This 2x plus 5 to the 7th, remember, can be thought of as 2x plus 5 to the 6th times 2x plus 5. So both terms have a 2x plus 5 to the 6th in them. So I'll write that, bring that out as a common factor, and then I'm going to have what's left over here. I'm going to write something plus something. And those somethings are what I have left after I factor out these common factors. So in this first term here, after I bring out the 2, I'm left with a 7. Because the, the 2 times the 7 would give me the 14. And after I bring out the 6x minus 8 to the 4th, I'm left with 6x minus 8. And after I bring out the 2x plus 5 to the 6th right there, there's just a 1. I don't even have to write the times 1. And then over on the second term, after I factor out the 2 here from that 30, I'm left with a 15. And after I factor out the 6x minus 8 to the 4th here, that's completely out front now. And after I factor out the 2x plus 5 to the 6th from that, I'm left with a 2x plus 5 to the first. Now if you're having trouble seeing what I did on this step going from here to here, imagine multiplying this times this. We need to take all of this stuff out front and distribute. All of this is going to get multiplied by that and then by that. And you can see that all of this multiplied together, I would get a 2 times 7, which gives me a 14. I get a 6x minus 8 to the 4th times 6x minus 8, minus 8, which gives me this 6x minus 8 to the 5th. And then this 2x plus 5 to the 6th gets multiplied in. And then when I multiply all of this by the second term, the 2 times the 15 gives me the 30. The 6x minus 8 to the 4th shows up there. And the 2x plus 5 to the 6th times the 2x plus 5 gives me the 2x plus 5 to the 7th. So these two lines are, in fact, mathematically equivalent. And this, this will simplify a bit. We'll keep all these extra factors out front. This is going to be 2 times 6x minus 8 to the 4th. times 2x plus 5 to the 6th times, and then multiply this out. 7 times 6 is 42. That's 42x minus 56. And then over here, 15 times 2 is 30. I have 30x plus, and 15 times 5 is 75. And then one more step, and we're done here. This is 2 times 6x minus 8 to the 4th times 2x plus 5 to the 6th, and then this simplifies over here. The 42x and the 32x gives me a 72x, and the negative 56 and the 75 gives me a plus 19. So once you did this, you're done with the calculus. That's the product rule. From there on down, it's just algebra, but that's the simplified factored form of the answer. Okay, we'll do one more, and we won't factor this one all the way out. We'll just apply the product rule. Here are the two functions. x cubed plus x is 1, and sine to the fourth of 5x is the other. So the derivative is the first, x cubed plus x, times the derivative of the second. And that, that's going to involve the chain rule. That function there, sine to the fourth 5x, can be thought of like this, sine of 5x to the fourth. That's what that little four means right there. So we need to, to take the derivative of this, we need to apply first the power rule. So we get four times sine of five x to the, to the third. So I'll write sine cubed five x times the derivative of the inner, which is the derivative of sine of five x. And the derivative of that would be the cosine of five x times the derivative of the inner right there, which would be times 5. So that's the first times the derivative of the second. 
and then I'll say plus the second sine to the fourth 5x times the derivative of the first which would be 3x squared plus 1 just applying the power rule to each term there and if you wanted to you could factor this a bit you could get a there's a sine cubed 5x there and a sine to the fourth 5x there so you could factor out a sine cubed 5x from each term but we'll stop there that's the application of the product rule to that particular example